I am incredibly excited to welcome our next guest to the show, the Kentucky representative for the 43rd district, as well as the founder of Hood to the Holler, Charles Booker. Welcome to the Damage Report. Thank you, brother. It's good to be with you. Uh, good to have you here. You know, we we like pretty much everyone. We're very closely watching um, that primary race where you came just within a couple points of a candidate that spent forty times as much as you, I think it was, and um, you know, uh, obviously so close. But it looks like coming out of that race, you're not slowing down a step. You've got this new organization. Can you tell us about it? Absolutely. And you know, you're right. The the race was tough. Um, it was a tough loss, but. Man, what we inspired, um, what we helped to ignite was so powerful. And I'm just really humbled, I'm proud, I'm excited. And you know, we were making it clear even during the primary that this wasn't about even just beating Mitch McConnell. And it certainly wasn't about me, it was about us transforming our future and doing the real work, um, addressing structural issues. And this organization is really our chance to answer the call um, after the election. Folks were reaching out from all over Kentucky and honestly all over the country saying, we can't stop. You know, what do we do? Um, we want to continue the work. Thank you for stepping up, but don't quit. And my response is, you know, this is about my survival. So quitting was never an option. Uh, and in fact, realizing that we created a platform for more people to have a voice, uh, we turned out a lot of new voters, uh, we inspired a lot of new organizers. People got involved in our campaign that had never been involved in politics ever. And we want to honor them. And in fact, we want to just bust the door open and create more space for regular folks to have a voice in leadership at the local, state, and federal level, and ultimately end generational poverty. And so, Hood to the Holler is our rallying cry. And it's our declaration that we're standing together as family. We're going to bust up the racist divides. We're going to tell a new story, a new Southern strategy. And I'm fired up about it. Yeah, that, that's actually what I want to ask you about next. So obviously terming it the new Southern strategy, you know, for people who follow American politics and political history, the Southern strategy you're, you're well, you're very familiar with. So tell me a little bit about um, sort of reclaiming that term and what will it look like in practice? Absolutely, uh, well, you know, our campaign really helped to shine a light on what it can look like um, in function. Um, I ran a campaign that was on issues that a lot of people said, well, oh, those are way too progressive for Kentucky. And my response is, well, you don't know much about the people of Kentucky then, because when you sit down and talk to folks and you lead in with love and not hate and division, you listen to folks, you find those common bonds and you tell the story about how issues really affect people and not just go into your partisan corner. You can build new big coalitions. And we understand that the history of politics in Kentucky and certainly in the South, but also across the country was fueled by these divides that were fostered through racism. That made certain communities think that we were different and created this dynamic where folks in Eastern Kentucky feel like they're on a whole different planet from people in the West End in the hood where I'm from. And from me working across Kentucky and seeing the fact that we share so many common bonds and we're fighting so many of the same battles. Uh, we were able to lean in and talk about issues from a personal place. And so that's really what we mean when we're saying a new Southern strategy. We're not gonna run away from our progressive values. We're not gonna run away from the bold um, declarations that we're calling for change, for structural change. We're not going to ignore structural and racism and gross inequity. We're not going to ignore poverty. And in fact, we're gonna talk about it. And we're gonna talk about it from the fact that we're in it together. And we're gonna call out the common enemy which are politicians um, that could care less whether we live or die, corporations that profit from our pain. And you know, it's not a partisan thing. And I, I love the fact that we're being able to tell a new story, which is really what this is all about. You know, if I, if I had to guess, I, I have very limited uh, experience in Kentucky. I think I've been there on one trip basically. And I know, you know, as we say on TYT all the time, that these progressive policies are not radical. They are the mainstream. That's what people support. The politicians just don't accept that. Um, but I would have probably guessed that Kentucky would have been a little bit less in that direction. And yet you, again, not running in any way from your progressive values, did extremely well in this primary. I'm wondering if if you think, and and maybe Hood of the Holler will be a part of this, that 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 will demonstrate that this can be a winning strategy, and that you might have more challengers like yourself in either in Kentucky or in other states like it, running on a similar sort of platform. Absolutely, and man, that's the goal. We want to create a new wave of citizen lobbyists. 
We want to empower folks, give them the tools, equip them to be uh, leaders and run for office at the local, state and federal level. Um, I'm essentially going to pour out all the tricks to the trade that I've learned as a young black man working in every level of government, youngest black state legislator in Kentucky since the first one. I'm in a lot of rooms where no one looks like me. And we're going to change that. And the way we do that is really how we were able to effectively run a campaign against you know some of the most money raised in history as it relates to a primary. Uh, we did relational organizing. Mm -hmm. We went to the places that people forget about and ignore. And we told the story and we listened to them and we elevated their voices. So we can talk about things like a Green New Deal in Eastern Kentucky and coal country. Because we listen to people and we understand that when they lose their livelihoods, they just don't want to be thrown off the cliff. And in fact, if we address sustainable energy, we address clean water, we address uh, creating more jobs and investing in infrastructure so that you're not being killed by the air or being um, made sick by the soil um, or the water that you're putting on your body. That is actually good for your future. And when we talk about that, folks are like, yeah, I want a Green New Deal. I don't know what they were telling me, but I want that. That's how we can address our politics. And you know, we built a big machine against uh, a lot of odds and against a lot of money with a lot of folks that were organizing their families. Uh, they were organizing their groups. We used our faith, our conviction. We told our story. I've rationed my own insulin as a type 1 diabetic. I've nearly died from it. And we inspired a lot of people to speak up and speak out in the protesting that you see, yeah. um, not only in Kentucky, but across the country is a sign that people are ready for something different. Because we know if we stay home, we can get killed in our home. And so we're standing up now and hood to the holler is a way to say, okay, you're fired up. But this is how you activate your power personally and collectively and across racial divides. And um, this is a big deal and I know it will transcend across the country. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.